Okay, okay, I'm back uh, with part two of this video. I have to shoot uh, short 10 minute videos because I'm having just terrible troubles with uh, editing and uh, uh, the GoPro camera compatibility with the computer I'm using. It's just a disaster. So until I get it all ironed out again, I'll shoot about 10 minute videos. <laughs> Okay, we're back onto this shaft here, and we're going to check out this bearing area. And uh, we looked into uh, Machinery's Handbook in the last video and discovered that uh, we're going to need an RC3 um, ANSI fit. And uh, the minimum clearance um, for this uh, bearing surface and the hole um, will be six ten thousandths of an inch. So let's see how we're doing here. I'm going to slip the gauge on. And just get it on there. It's a touchy little devil. And you just roll it forward. Okay, we're looking at uh, um, one, one thousandths plus one ten thousandths undersized from the nominal. Now, that's not a problem with this, and I'll explain that as we go on with this. Okay, now let's get to the end and see where we're at here. Uh-oh. Look at that. We are seven ten thousandths even smaller on the end here. And uh, the... Uh, Minimum clearance again is six ten thousandths to one thousandths. So this again is a terrible, unacceptable bearing surface for that fit. Okay. Recommended fit. Let's have a look here. Let's clock this thing. I, I suspect this is out of round two. Boy, it's sure showing it. I want to rotate it some more. Right about there, and we'll see where we're at. I'm seeing about three ten thousandths out of round. That's just totally unacceptable. And I don't know how that happened. You know, it's not um, like I'm pointing fingers at anybody and going, you idiot. But I think there's just a, kind of a miscommunication or a lack of understanding of just what has to take place for this to function. Okay. So, the question would be, how do you make something like this and not have these problems? Well, an old-time way to do this would be to put center holes in here, okay? And it could be the problem with this out around this is uh, uh, centering it and... Uh, um, for some reason, this is tapped, and the, and the guy says it doesn't need to be tapped, so I don't know what exactly is going on with that. But, um, so we got these things uh, taper and also out around, and um, so you could make this by putting center holes in it, Setting it up in centers on the lathe and drive it with the dog, right? Then then machine this end here, then flip it and machine that end. Now, the this is 12L 12, uh, 12 material. It, it's not exactly what I choose to work with, but it does work. It will work. It will work for this. But one of the problems here is the uh, this is like a cold rolled material. And uh, just a quick check uh, using a V-amble micrometer shows uh, that this is uh, out uh, 
uh, every bit of a half thousandths. See? You see how that works? See, and it's showing uh, uh, half thousandths there. You rotate it a little bit. See, you see there's a, there it's nominal. So, the, this piece is out round too. So, it, if this was a turned ground and polished piece, I could just chuck it up in the lathes because I grind the lathe truck chuck jaws true right get it running true and then i could cut this flip it around and and cut that so i i would do that with turned and gra um, ground and polished uh, um pre-hard 4000 steels what i like to use um, but like i say this is okay and i've made parts out of forged steel too and cast uh, materials. And uh, what you have to do is, uh, is, is get the outside true, and uh, then you can chalk it. Now, you say, well, why not just uh, do it between centers anyway? Well, you can, except for when you get into the pre-hard stuff, and uh, you got to run the stuff uh, fast using carbide, okay? You can't run between centers with a drive dog at 2,000 RPMs. It's just way, way out of, out of balance, you know, and I, I don't recommend even trying it. So I'm going to have to decide how to make these parts. I think there's two, four, six that... Um, he would like uh, made. This is a tool he sells um, for uh, other people that work on this particular gizmos. So I'm going to um, think about this just, <laughs> just a little bit and uh, decide whether to do it an old time way, you know, and, and run it between centers. Or chuck, uh, chuck these up. I'm going to have to find out how, if I can remove a little bit off this. I, I seen a sample um, that he had that was put together, but he took it back with him because it's part of a tool that's uh, in use. And uh, he, he's got a spring on, on one end, and there's a cutter head fat here. And... Uh, I will uh, see, uh, it, he had this uh, polished, but I'll see if, if it's okay if I can just take enough material off this to, to get it true, off, off these, uh, and then I can do the whole thing uh, really quickly in a chuck and, and keep these concentric, you know. With, with these two ends being out around, and plus taper and stuff. I mean, uh, it, I, I was going to put this on uh, the surface plate and check it with V-blocks, but why, why bother if the thing's out around? <laughs> you know. So anyway, we'll, uh, one way or the other, I'm going to finish these parts for them, and uh, then we'll uh, check them on the surface plate to make sure that they're true. It's got to be true. Okay, so now I was ta <laughs> talking about these crazy fits, okay, from the machinery's handbook. And over here I can demonstrate rotating and sliding fits. Here's your sliding fits here on the crosshead of this model steam engine. See, we got the uh, rotating fits, got another sliding fit here. And when you do one of these kits, the, like the plants, I'll say, or something like this, a 3 8 cent shaft, and it'll show a 3 8 shaft. Then they'll show the hole through the bearing that's 3 8 but you know, you got to have clearance. So you can look it up right here. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to be back with a whole bunch more on bearings. Now, 
these are playing variants, and there's a lot of relationship to uh, roller and um, other non um, non-friction variants. Okay, I will be back. By the way.